on how sometimes, after a night of heavy drinking, you'll wake up with a fucking ugly taste in your mouth. Like a French guy shat in it, and it's dry, like a desert, and every time you try to swallow, it's like doing a shot of sand. So, you knock back a glass of water to lubricate the inside of your mouth, but somehow, it doesn't help at all. Well, today, we have the personification of that. Recently on the internet, there's been a lot of discussion around genital preferences and transphobia. Really? I thought it was YouTube restricted mode, Sweden taking it up the ass, and Amy Schumer's antics being humorously described as comedy. In this video, I'm going to use the word cissexism instead of transphobia, but they're really similar words. Well then why fucking use it, you nonce? You already had a perfectly good word right there, and we wouldn't have to do this. Isn't this going out of your way to be different thing getting a little bit out of hand, Riley? At its most basic, cissexism means prejudice or discrimination against transgender people. Oh, transphobia, yeah. So what's been happening is that some people are making the argument that it's not cissexist at all to only be attracted to people with one kind of genitals. Oh, uh, not this. Have we done this video? Oh no, that one was about having sex with disabled people, wasn't it? Or sucking off an amputee or something. Riley is just not a fan of personal preference, is he? At all. In his eyes, unless you would fuck absolutely everything, you're guilty of some kind of ism. For example, these people might argue that being attracted to only women with vaginas in no way negatively affects trans people. Fuck man, your jump cuts drive me mad. Look, Riley, society is kind of growing out of the whole other people's sexuality being our business thing, so, you know, do your best to keep up, mate. Try to be a little more progressive, yeah? On the other hand, I would argue that it's more complicated than that. We all have our implicit biases built into our preferences, and gender isn't as simple as just the genitals you have. But Five factors, Riley, presence of a Y chromosome, own hormones, gonads, reproductive anatomy, and external genitalia. Fuck, man, I thought you looked this stuff up. Why am I having to do it? But after I say that, I usually get a bunch of blatantly cis-sexist responses, so I thought I'd address all of those responses at once. Number one, you're being homophobic. Well, I'm heterophobic too, I think. I mean, unless that's gonna be comment number two, I think it deserves a mention. I don't think there's a word for discriminating against bisexuals, but let's be fair, they already have it all, don't they? In this argument, I often get accused of homophobia, lesbophobia, or lesbian erasure by lesbians who believe that I'm trying to change their sexual orientation or identity. I didn't hear a fuck word he said beyond lesbophobia. Like, lesbians are really beginning to piss me off like that because they're not just gay women. No, no, they're lesbians, right? And that was fine. You want your own word? Fine. And then they went, oh, oh, we want to be in the title thing of our community. And people were like, but you're already in it under G for gay. And they went, no, no, we want our own letter. And it's got to be at the beginning. And now they want their own phobia. Fucking lesbophobia. No, lesbians. You've already got one. Learn to fucking share. They say that my language sounds a lot like a dude who tried to turn them straight or like conversion therapy. Yeah, I mean, you actually kind of are advocating conversion therapy, Riley. Sexuality isn't a choice and it's not something you can unlearn, as you so often put it. Those responses are rooted in cis sexism. This is because I'm not telling lesbians that they can't be lesbians. If you're a woman who only likes women, go ahead, identify as a lesbian. But some women have penises. Holy shit, I did not expect him to say that. No, Riley, some trans women have penises. I don't know if I should tell you this because someone has obviously kept it from you for whatever reason, maybe just to see what happens. But if someone has a penis, that's a much bigger telltale factor than their outward appearance. And if the fact that some lesbians might be attracted to those women offends you, it's because you don't think trans women are real women. Well, you're the one who used the word real, Riley. But I'll make it simple for you, or as simple as you. A woman is a woman. Someone who transitioned into a woman is a trans woman. Those are the ones who can have their own cocks. Is that okay? And that's transition, Riley, not transvestite, which is your style. That's because these accusations of homophobia make it sound like I'm trying to convince lesbians to like men, but I'm not. I'm trying to show that preferences for women with vaginas over women with penises might be partially informed by the influence of a cis-sexist society. Women with penises. Riley, my man, you've gone off the edge, mate. You've lost it, I swear. Look, I have it on really good authority that lesbians just aren't into dick. They don't like them. Doesn't matter who has one, just not into them. 
You do not have to like men. You do not have to date men or have sex with men. And if you think that's what I'm arguing, you're simultaneously strawmanning my argument and implying that trans women are men. No, it's implying that trans women are trans women, which is 100% accurate. Is all of this an attempt to reinforce the idea that you're a lesbian, Riley? Because it's not fucking working, mate. Number two, you're upholding rape culture. This is honestly the worst response that I've heard and probably the most cissexist one. It's just such a cumbersome word to say, isn't it? Cissexist. Sexist. Fucking stupid. Anyway, yeah, I agree with Riley about it being a bad argument, and that hurts me. But anything based on rape culture in the West is pretty much automatically false. That's because trans women have a long history of being accused of being rapists by cis women. It's the logic behind bathroom bills that prevent trans women from using the right bathroom. It's why some cis women are terrified of the idea of sharing a locker room with a trans woman. I think it's got more to do with the fact that the person in question used to be a man. I mean, if they've still got all their tools, then yeah. Yeah, I can see why some people wouldn't like that. These are the issues that arise when you start saying things like women with penises, Riley, and there's no correct answer to them. This is a very common tactic used by anti-trans folks to discredit trans women as just men trying to invade women's spaces so they can rape them. Fucking hell, if someone went through those lengths, like hormone therapy and shit like that, just to rape someone, fuck, I'm tempted to say they fucking earned it. Even if this is not your intention when bringing this up, this is what you are implying and it is where this argument comes from. Suggesting that trans women are rapists for wanting to be fully recognized as women is extremely harmful. And implying someone is a rapist just because they were born male isn't? Fucking hell, right? Why am I even bothering to listen to what you're saying when you obviously fucking don't? And I should note that I'm not saying you have to do anything without consent. I'm a big fan of affirmative consent and you should never feel pressured to have sex with somebody. Unless they've paid for it and you've already spent the money, I guess. Or if you're like contractually obliged or something. I'm sure you could get out of both of those actually but you probably need a lawyer and that lawyer might want to have sex with you as payment so either way you're fucked this isn't about an individual this is not saying you have to have sex with a trans woman or you're cis sexist it's saying that you should examine the societal influences on your preferences why if they're not gonna change and who's to say there's a societal influence on your preferences anyway it's not like someone would be into asians because all the men in their family have always been into asians if absolutely no one was into chicks with dicks, you might have something. But the fact that some people are is proof that society has no effect on sexual preference. There's a massive difference between honing in on individual scenarios and considering wider societal issues and attitudes. And there's a massive difference between a woman and a woman with a cock. I can't believe I had to say that. Number three, I'm allowed to have my preferences. Technically, you're right. Technically? What the fuck? You're allowed to have your preferences and you don't have to change anything. But there's more to it than that, and ignoring the deeper issues by stopping at a surface level analysis doesn't do this issue any justice. People's sexual preferences is not an issue, Riley. It hasn't been for a little while now. Unless it's kids, then it's kind of a problem. Like, you're allowed to have a lot of things. You're allowed to have prejudice towards trans people, but that doesn't mean you should. So if we look a little deeper into this issue, there's the possibility of your genital preferences being at least somewhat partially informed by growing up in a cis-sexist society. Bullshit, mate! Because how would we have different preferences? Is. Why don't me and my mates who I grew up with all have the same taste in women? How did any of them turn out to be gay? Why aren't there like entire villages where everyone likes BDSM? Absolute bullshit, mate. There's also the fact that a preference is different than saying you would never do something. Like having a preference for tall girls is fine, but refusing to date anyone under 5'7 is ridiculous. And yet it does happen, dickhead. I, for instance, won't date a woman whose dick is bigger than mine. And obviously that's not a perfect analogy because short girls as a group don't face the societal marginalization that trans women do. Yeah, your comparison is being a short woman to being a woman with a dick. But I'm interested in having a conversation about labels and implicit bias and trans inclusive language. No, you're not. You fucking blocked half the world on Twitter, you cunt. Riley, I can take most of your bullshit, but don't fucking sit there and lie to me. Simply saying, it's my preference, end of discussion, is a good way of sidelining all of those issues and instead centering the feelings of cis people in a discussion that's about trans people. Well, no one represents everyone else, dickhead. And either way, it is down to preference, end of fucking discussion. There are no issues, Riley. Unless you're gonna campaign for fuck a tranny day to be put on the national calendar, you've got no dice. Number four, I have a trans friend who says this is okay. People love their tokens. I've done an entire video on moral licensing and why this is a terrible defense. 
offense, but in summary, you'll always be able to find trans people to back up your cis sexist views. Oh shit, I understand why he's saying cis sexist now, because otherwise he'd be sat there calling his audience transphobic, and even they wouldn't have that. Impressive bit of spin, Riley. You should work for North Korea. Actually, just go to North Korea. You'll always be able to find gay people who spout anti-gay rhetoric. You can even find people of color who openly advocate racist policies. That doesn't make you right. Having a trans friend doesn't mean you're suddenly an expert on trans issues. Oh yeah? And where exactly did you get your doctorate in this bullshit? People often internalize negative ideas about their own identities and regurgitate them with passion. I've met gay men who told me that their homosexuality was a sin and that their punishment was to be celibate for their entire lives. And even still, they'd probably go to hell. Obviously, that would be anti-gay for any straight person to say. Or oh, really pro-religion? We don't know. And when you say anti-gay, do you mean lesbians too? Or do they get their own word? And it's also not okay for gay people to advocate that. In the same way, if trans people are saying cis-sexist garbage, it's still cis-sexist garbage. This is just another way of labeling the things you don't like, isn't it? Things you can write off and ignore because it's cis-sexist garbage. Shit, man, the real world is gonna kick your ass. And look, there are cis people who are on my side as well, so if you think it's okay to point to your token trans friend, then I can just point to my token cis friend. Don't actually call him your token friend, Riley, you twat. It's all good as a joke and all, but say it and mean it, and they won't stay your token friend for very long. Number five, I'm triggered by penises because of past sexual trauma. Hold on, hold on, I'm not letting that go. Bring that back up. I'm triggered by penises. Fucking hell, this, this has got to be the... I, I mean, what does the plural mean? Does it have to be multiple penises? One is fine, you get a bit shaky at two, but when a third comes out, you just fucking lose it. What does that mean? What does that sentence mean? That's completely understandable. I've never said that anyone should have to have sex with someone with a penis if they don't want to. Why did you specify with a penis? It gets fucking weirder. Did Riley actually just say it's okay for a woman to rape a man? If intimacy with someone who has a penis is triggering for you, I would never suggest that you have to do that. Take your time to heal and work through your trauma at your own pace. Just be aware that the majority of people making the I could never date someone with a penis argument are not doing so because of trauma or triggers. I'm getting triggered by a penis right fucking now! So that is all of the typical responses I could think of. The first two responses in particular come from turf, rad fam, and gender critical ideologies, which are all proudly anti-trans. Even if you don't consider yourself a part of those movements, you're siding with them when you use their argument. Yeah, yeah, and not supporting Black Lives Matter means you support the KKK. Shut the fuck up. Agreeing with one thing someone says doesn't mean you agree with everything they say. Otherwise, all vegetarians would be Nazis. Oh, actually... Their entire platform is cis-sexist, and their arguments reflect that. So even if you say you believe trans women are women, it doesn't do a whole lot of good if you're still completely siding with folks who don't believe that trans women are women. No, that's not what you mean, is it? You mean saying trans women are women doesn't do any good unless you fuck one. That's what you mean, Riley. And the last thing I want to say about this is that if you'd rather not have sex with a woman who has a penis, maybe just don't make such a huge deal of it. What? Me? You're the one making a fucking video on it, Riley. Don't bring that that shit to my table. Trans women are often afraid of not being found attractive or desirable after coming out, and you're not helping. If you really want to be an ally to trans people, you could just not talk about it. And by that, I'm not trying to censor you, okay? So don't pretend this is censorship. No, I know, Riley. You don't censor anyone. You just ignore the people that are in danger of making you think. You have the freedom to say whatever you want. I'm just asking you to consider if it's necessary to say those things when they reflect harmful or violent rhetoric. Yeah, so don't run up and down the road shouting about how you wouldn't fuck a trans woman. And this has all been about trans women too, hasn't it? I guess trans men don't get that problem, do they? Everyone's fucking them, can't get enough. Because if you have an opinion that you know is only going to make people feel bad about themselves, why constantly share it with the world? Well, uh, the adverts on my videos pay me money, and I've got a handful of patrons who sling me a couple of quid every month over Patreon. Links are in the description. That and, you know, if you're gonna whine, I'm gonna whine about you whining. It's fine to not find people attractive, but it's mean to constantly yell about how unattractive you find those people, especially when those people are oppressed. But Riley, yelling out I would not fuck that while pointing at some fat ugly bitch is generally considered poor form anyway. There's no especially when those people are oppressed about it. Stop being so fucking 
special. For another imperfect analogy, it'd be like if you weren't attracted to girls with short hair. That would be fine, but you probably wouldn't write articles and make videos defending why it's okay for you to not like girls with short hair. I see in here girls doing that all the time regarding a man's height. Picky bitches. You could do that, but sometimes it's just best to be polite. Again, that's not what you mean, is it, Riley? You mean, if you don't agree with me, then don't say anything. I would love to see what he'd be like in an actual debate. I bet he'd end up crying because he kept getting cut off. He'd probably call it some kind of oppression. What the fuck is up with this generation? There are so many easily offended, thin-skinned pussies. I reckon it's the Chinese, you know, putting something in the US water supply, and over time, they'll just be able to walk in because everyone will be too afraid to leave their safe spaces. The only opposition they'll get will be a couple of marches and someone might release a shit fucking song. Thanks for watching guys, and remember, if you really support women, you'll suck a girl's dick.